Okay. Hey, I'm Evan. Uh, I'm going to be talking about ZK Chains. Um, I think we've seen uh, today a lot of different projects working on you know, getting ZK out, out there. And I think it's really interesting what that means for when you design a protocol that's meant to handle a lot of different ZK use cases. So Mina is, of course, one of these. So I'll be talking about ZK Chains kind of generally, like what they mean, how they look like, as well as Mina in particular, uh, what decisions Mina has made to kind of make this possible. Um, I, I, you know, I have a slide on zero knowledge proofs. I think probably most folks here know what they are. <laughs> I, here's how I often think about them. There are these proofs about computation, give you these really two properties. One is proofs about private inputs, and the other one is trusted compute. You can have computation and you can verify it uh, you know, much more cheaply than rerunning the actual execution of the program itself. And, and this has a lot of use cases, you know, things like proofs of identity, you can uh, take an identity, you can make a proof about it, the proof can uh, create selective disclosure over facts about the identity. You can also do this for arbitrary kind of pieces of data. You can have, for example, an asset with information about it you want to create a proof about. You could have, um, you know, on chain state that you want to make a proof about. All these different things you can make proofs about and put them on chain. And, and of course, also you can do this for rollups. You can also have a rollup which you make a proof about it and put it on chain. I think the way I often think about ZK chains is like this, you want to be able to do these kinds of proofs of very different kinds of things, proofs about uh, private, private state, proofs about uh, computation. You want a way to do all these things together because uh, you know, they both work well together and a lot of the infrastructure is common to it. It would be nice if that existed so we could build with it. Uh, and that's where these ZK chains come in. Uh, I think at the moment, like I think of mostly like Mina, Aztec, and Alio as the ones doing this, because because the tree requires changing a lot of how a normal blockchain works. In uh, these ZK blockchains, you need a way to do proof construction, so not just running like Solidity code on chain, but actually creating proofs often on user devices for privacy, and then sending those to an on-chain environment to be verified, which means. If you have to actually make it quite fast, you have to make sure it's fast enough to be proven, particularly client side on devices. So you, you can't quite use ZK VMs yet, but there are a lot of tools you can use, ZK DSLs, things like uh, Mina's ONJS, Aztecs Noir, et cetera. Uh, you also need an environment for taking all these proofs and putting them together, uh, not just in like a naive way often, like you actually want to have some way to do multi party composability of zero knowledge proofs. And so that often means you end up with like these UTXO style systems uh, that have different trade-offs, but you need to have some environment that allows this to happen. A and lastly, you need actually consensus over all the stuff that's happening. You need, I called it here ZKL1, but it really it can be any kind of consensus algorithm that's running over tracking uh, the application of all of this, these ZK zero knowledge proofs. A and I think also it's interesting when you're thinking about each of these layers is they all kind of affect each other in different ways. For example, the proofs you make are often much larger than normal transactions. So that means when you're designing your consensus layer, you have to take that into account because you're going to, um, you know, if you want to do a high throughput in a decentralized way, that's an extra challenge. Uh, so Mina is a chain where we like have been for a very long time now working on putting all of these kind of insights and pieces together. And I, I think one way to think about what Mina is doing is it's taking this concept of trustless, which is still an important and part of how this all works, and adding this property of verifiability. So not only can you delegate your trust to like some other set of entities which are doing you know, this decentralized computation, but you also get this property of verifiability where you can verify everything that is happening, both everything that any user has ever submitted to the chain, anything that the consensus nodes are doing, you can verify all of that. And we'll talk about that more in a minute. But uh, I think it's like a key property that is, is nice to have uh, when you're making a blockchain. Uh, another thing that one can say about this is uh, there's people I've been talking a long time about these new kind of zero knowledge proof architectures. I, I think it's like a, a big thing in the Ethereum community now uh, with, with Vitalik also saying we need to move everything to ZK. Uh, this is something that Mina has now. So if you want to see what this looks like, it's something you can check out. Uh, Mina is constantly updating a recursive proof of, of the blockchain. Uh, so it's it's uh, we're doing some cool things that also I'll get into, but uh, it's it's a new next you know thing. Uh, so I'll kind of walk through what it looks like to actually execute a transaction on Mina, uh, starting at like this top level about proof construction. 
So when you build a proof, when you run a transaction on Mina, what you're really doing is you're creating a proof about, uh, you know, some uh, state transition of your application that has to be written in zero knowledge proof, you know, land. It's not can't just be Solidity or something. It has to be something specialized for zero knowledge proofs. Uh, which means for for Mina, we use circuits for that. It's it's a uh, you know, directly you use this other technology, ONJS, to make these circuits and to create proofs about them that run very quickly. And what this also means is you get this public-private property we've been talking about. You can make some inputs hidden and private so that you don't have to reveal them, you get privacy. You can make certain things public as well if you want to, uh, if, if, as well for, for your applications. There's also a new framework being worked on called ProtoKit which uh, takes like the kind of native zero knowledge experience, which often has a lot of challenges around it, particularly I mentioned before, like often it's UTXO kind of at the base, and ProtoKit adds on top of that a lot of functionality to make it very easy as a developer to build, um, to, to, to build uh, with, with zero knowledge proofs. And, and I, think, I think the mental model is much closer to like Solidity or normal smart contracts, so definitely worth checking out. You kind of get a hybrid where things are relatively straightforward, uh, but you still can plug in the zero knowledge proof functionality as well. Uh, this is all built on top of Kimchi, Mina's proof system. Uh, so it, what's interesting in Mina is you're, when you create transactions, you're really just creating proofs, so the proof system really has a big impact. Uh, it's also pretty fast, Kimchi. It works on devices, on you know, browsers as well as on mobile devices. Uh, I, I believe as of a few weeks ago, we have it working on both Android and iOS like fairly reasonably and should get pushed out to the wallets on those platforms pretty soon. Uh, also, uh, with everything in Mina, everything is succinct, which means you can run a huge computation and get a very small proof at the end, both of the whole chain and of individual um, computations. And you can see in the top, like just so you can track it, like we have a browser, we have a server, we have a phone. They can all make proofs, they can all make transactions. The proofs are computed locally and all the data stays private because of that. Next, uh, we have this next layer, which is, okay, you've created these proofs, you've created your, your transaction, what do you actually want to do with it? Well, you need some environment to be able to actually take these proofs and put them together in a way that makes sense. You need some, some way to do that. And I think what's particularly interesting about, a, um, about Mina's way of doing this, and about a lot of the, the, these new ZK systems is, you, you don't, uh, the main chain is verifying all these transactions, but it doesn't have to actually re-execute them themselves. And that means you can put a very large amount of computation into each transaction. And you can actually create uh, architectures which uh, kind of nest different computations so you can have each transaction actually representing a lot of data, like an entire ZK rollup or a ZK app chain, et cetera. And this is great for the L1 because it means that not every participant has to be uh, re-executing everything that's ever happened. They just can look at the proof and get verif verifiability over that it had happened. And um, this, this also means that when you're building an application, Amina, uh, you get access to like, uh, you know, uh, much more decentralization and you don't have to be all competing for like this one block space that everyone is competing over. Uh, things can spread out more while still being verifiable at the layer one level. Uh, you can see here like we're imagining in this example, we have our ZKP transaction, it's going to a ZK rollup which then gets settled onto the main chain. But you could imagine each one of these can be like a different ZK app chain settling many like tens or hundreds of TPS uh, on, on Tamina. And, and lastly is the actual consensus, which I mentioned. So what Mina is constantly doing is it is taking the uh, history of all the chain and it is updating a recursive zero knowledge proof of everything that happened since Genesis. Uh, which means that after these transactions are applied, they can get sent to devices, which can then check the state and know that what the state they're looking at is actually backed by a real sequence of transactions that has all been signed, all been correct, uh, according to the, the proof system, signatures, cryptography, et cetera. Uh, so that's really nice because it really gives you this really strong decentralization property where you aren't just looking at other nodes and saying, okay, like, do I trust that this validator set has like, been doing their job correctly and what they're coming back is, is, is correct? You're actually getting this like, proof that says, actually, it is correct and you can verify all of it. Uh, and, and that proof even works you know, on, on browsers, phones, et cetera, which is, which is awesome. Uh, and here, I won't run through this completely, but here's an example of like, the way that this kind, kind of code looks uh, in practice. Uh, you, you know, you have, in this example, there's something we're working on where 
uh, your wallet will be able to store credentials and make proofs about them. So we have a proof being created, sent to the browser. That proof ends up in a ZK app chain, ends up on Mina, goes down to the devices. And the code is for like what it might look like to have a KYC proof. So you could imagine that you've gone to some KYC site, you have some KYC credential that you've downloaded into your uh, browser extension, and now you are making a proof about it, and that proof is ending up on Mina and then end up being verified by all the nodes in the network. Uh, here's another way to look at it as well, uh, just like kind of in like the language of all the existing things happening in crypto. Some things happen on Mina on kind of this base layer, and some things are best delegated to this application layer, the ZK app chain, ZK rollup layer, uh, where you can achieve like much higher scalability and verify it on the L1, but not necessarily have to execute it on the L1. So you get this kind of scalability like architecture from, from, from how this is set up. Uh, so programmable ZKPs are available now on mainnet. It was released earlier this year. And there's a lot of activity going on uh, just because everything is, is new and there's a lot being released. Uh, the developer community is pretty active in, in the Discord as well. So if you want to try one of these things and be able to ask questions, it's a good, good way to do it. Uh, it's also like we are in the process of shipping a lot of stuff right now for Mina with this just having launched. It's like a new, new ecosystem. Everything is new, you know, like it's not EVM, it's not Solidity. We have to get a lot of this stuff launched. Uh, there's lots of, you know, different interesting trade-offs and advantages to, to different things you build on Mina, which is, which, is always, which is always interesting. But ultimately having a lot of the ZK components uh, available as well. Uh, there's like a lot of stuff here that's launching. This is just over the next six months or so, a lot of stuff that has to exist. I think a couple I'll call it in particular beyond ones I haven't mentioned already. Uh, one is like this Rust node slash web node. This is like a version of Mina compiled into the browser. So not only are this have browsers verifying Mina, but also actually being able to produce blocks uh, for Mina. Uh, you can actually go to this now, and you know if you type it in, it'll it'll work. It takes a few minutes to load, but then you have a full node running on your phone. Uh, we're thinking about how to like uh, do like a proper like release of this so that we can get, you know, I, ideally I'd like you know this is this is a very far off vision, but everyone you know being able to produce blocks on their phones, participating in these networks, so that not only are you um, uh, trusting how they work, and not only are you verifying them, but also you can participate in how they function. Like kind of a really full vision of decentralization um, in the, you know, hopefully not too far, but, but in the future. Um, another couple to mention is we're working a lot on making a possible easy to launch tokens on Mina. So uh, there was a token standard that's now out as of a couple months, and now we're working on things like DEXs, launch pads on top of that to make that more viable to, to launch things on top of, of Mina. Uh, so yeah, if you want to try this out, like we didn't go like kind of the next level up, which is all the applications. But I think as people here have seen and know, like there's lots of applications you can kind of build on top of this infrastructure. So definitely check it out, and uh, you can try building things if if it's um, something you want to do. Uh, and that's it. So Mina, you know, has these different properties, you know, private inputs, trusted compute and scale, and this decentralization property. Uh, check it out if you're interested. We're still, you know, we're hard at work building a lot of like the core infrastructure and features on top of it. But a lot of it is also working today, so you can try it and check it out if you're interested. And that's it for the main talk, but I can take any questions. Thanks. Thanks, Evan. Any questions? Uh, I'm curious, do you have any plans for hardware acceleration from the client side? Yeah, so... Yeah, I mean, this camp and like the last talk, like there's a lot of different kind of challenges to actually making client side work work well. And at the moment, we're seeing like within like the kind of one to two gigabyte memory limit on Wasm, like it's like okay, but not great. Um, but we are looking at integrating directly into wallets that are in Mina and have their own embedded browsers, kind of native provers built into those wallets, so that if you're using those wallets, you the, the, the browser program will use the native mobile prover instead of the, the WASM one. And then at that point, we're looking at uh, what can we do then natively inside these native applications on iOS and Android to, to make it really, really fast. So that's all kind of early talking about it, but eventually like, we, we are like figuring out that native proving side, and eventually we do want to add like, GPU support and et cetera on top of, on top of that to make, it, to make it really fast. Great. Yeah.
then I'll ask another one. <laughs> yeah, so uh, I'm curious, can you share more plans for uh, the in interoperability? Like how to uh, let Mina interact with like Ethereum and other layer ones? Yeah, so there's actually a really cool project building on top of Mina for this right now where they're working Oh, okay, so I guess like, okay, so right now the, thi the main thing that's happening for this is we're working with Aligned Layer on a verifying Mina on top of Aligned, uh, on top of Ethereum. So there's a bridge uh, going that way, as well as there's a couple like centralized bridges in the work. There's another team though that's interesting working on um, a native verifier of, of Mina in both EVM as well as a verifier of Ethereum in Mina's uh, VM as well. So this kind of like trustless, um, trustless verification. I, I think what's really interesting is they've seen like they've made a lot of good progress getting actually the Ethereum to Mina's side working. So we'll hopefully have in Mina's system full verification of Ethereum and other networks in Mina. Uh, and then probably for like, like for now through Aligned but as well as others like the other way as well working. So we're kind of trying to work towards this like trustless bridge verified proving future. Um, I, I think there'll be more things on in the next few months, but but that's that's kind of where we're trying to, to go with it. Great, interesting. Thank you, Evan. Thanks. Thank you.